Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video. And today I decided to bring this really cool video where I'm going to be showing you guys how to build and deploy a beginner react application where you're able to um, shop around in a in a store uh, with products that you you add to your store. Um, and uh, you can add stuff to cart. Uh, just like this, you can remove them as well by just looking at your cart, you'll see all the items you added are over here. You can add more as you can see, you can see that's total price for all of your the items in your store by just click by just looking at this amount over here, you can also remove them change them If I want to buy 89 iPhones, for example, this is how it would look, I can also just remove them just like this, right. Um, and I can continue shopping and do this for how many other items I want to as well. The reason why I wanted to make this video is because, uh, first of all, a lot of people ask me to make a shopping cart system like a shopping cart um, app in react because honestly, it like I had never done something like this because I never needed to. Uh, but it does help a lot for beginners, I just realized the the logic behind building something like this can really teach a beginner all the basics of states in react, how to organize your project, even um, learning stuff like state management, uh, which is really important when you're learning react as a beginner. So for that reason, I decided to make this video. And at the end, as a bonus, I'll also show you guys how to deploy this application so that anyone with the URL can actually access it, we're going to be using Hostinger to deploy, I've, I've shown how to deploy to Hostinger in the past. So stick around for the rest of the video because I'm really excited to bring this to you guys. And yeah, that's basically it. So now let's get into the tutorial. Okay, everyone. So before we start writing the code, I'm gonna actually show you guys how to set up the initial part of the deployment process for this application. Like I said, um, we're going to be deploying this app at the end of the video. But uh, we're going to be using a platform called Hostinger, which is a platform I've actually shown in the past, and I really enjoy it. And the reason why I think Hostinger is a good option for hosting your websites is because first of all, it is used by a lot of people. So it is a reliable service where they have really good support 24 hour support, in fact. Um, and it's really nice because like in the past, I've had to deal with um, needing quick I, like support for a specific project that I was hosting. And since there are services out there, which don't offer 24-7 um, support, um, I wasn't able to get it in time. And when you're hosting on a project, may it be uh, a startup or anything like that, um, it is really important to actually be able to have access and maintain it 24 seven. So that's one of the reasons why I really like it. And also because um, I think it's pretty affordable. Uh, for those who don't know, if you want to have your project being live, um, and I would recommend doing it for I don't know, personal projects, or um, even for your personal portfolio or something like that, um, you would have to pay because you need to host it somewhere. And with hosting or they actually have a really good like price quality ratio, where like, it's really affordable for the the, the quality that you gain from it. And um, when we start um, uh, creating an account, uh, so you go to this website over here, I'm gonna have a link in the description if you want to click on it. Um, when you go to this website, and you go to uh, the, the web hosting plan over here, you'll see first of all, it's really cheap, it's $2.99 a month. Um, and you also gain a free domain and a free email from it. So most places out there, you have to buy a domain on top of buying and paying for your hosting service. But if you go through this hosting or web hosting plan over here, you actually get a completely free domain and a free email, which means that um, you can have like a Gmail or something like that with the uh, at um, with the domain of your website, which is really cool. And I think for especially for personal portfolios, I um, mean, creating your own brand, that's really good. Um, so what I want to do over here is I want to click on add to cart, um, I actually already have um, this hosting plan. Uh, but I'm just going to show you guys real quick what you guys have to do. So you go over here, and there's a bunch of options, right? Um, I would recommend choosing the 48 months one, because uh, technically, all three of these have the same price. However, um, if you choose the 48 month one, you get the same price for a longer time. So if you get the 12 month one, and at the end of 12 months, you don't you, you want to continue using it, the price won't be the same as it is right here, it will renew at $8.99 a month. So if you want to continue having it for this price, I would recommend choosing this option over here. Then what you have to do is 
you have to fill out, um, first of all, create your account. I already have an account. Log in with Google, Facebook, or just put your email address. And then you choose over here um, what kind of payment you want to have. Now, one important thing is you do have a coupon if you want to pay for this because I have a coupon for you guys since Hostinger is actually supporting this video. Um, you just put Pageo Tech and you'll see that it will actually um, decrease the price uh, by a lot, as you can see over here. So the Pageo Tech coupon is really nice. And I would recommend using it. Um, and it comes out to a very cheap price for, for literally having two years of hosting and one year of a free domain. So you just fill that up, put your information, um, it's completely secure. And when you're done with that, you log into your account. So I'm gonna cut the video right here to go to the dashboard just to show you guys how the dashboard should look. Okay, so this over here is what is known as the H panel in Hostinger. Um, it is your dashboard where you can do all of the stuff such as claiming your free domain that you just got from um, the hosting plan and also setting up your hosting. Now, we're gonna put a stop to this right now and we're gonna start writing the code for the video. And if you're interested in, in learning how to deploy this, come at the end of the video, just choose the, there's like, the video is divided into th timestamps. So just go at the end where we're gonna be deploying this app and setting it, all of this up for you guys. So with that in mind, let's get into the code of the video. Okay, everyone. So uh, let's start coding the project. Um, I have set up over here a simple React application. Um, so I'm not gonna show me just running create React app. I also deleted a couple of the initial files that come with um, running the command. And all I left was the app.css, the app.js, and the index.js. I want to remind you guys that in most of my videos, I don't show myself writing CSS because I feel like it's not the purpose of the video. Um, the purpose is writing the React code. So um, if you still wanna check out my CSS, all the link for like all the code will be in the description. And I also will be pausing the video at some points to paste CSS just so that the project doesn't look very ugly. Um, but I'm not actually gonna show you guys me writing the CSS. But basically, um, how we're gonna start is by adding some packages to our package.json because uh, we do use some extra dependencies. And the dependencies we're gonna use is, um, first we're gonna use Phosphor React for um, some icons that we're gonna be using. Um, it's a very simple, small um, library with a bunch of really cool icons that you might wanna use. Then we're gonna install React Router DOM because we need to have different routes in our application. Now, I believe this is just the two packages that we're gonna be installing. Remember that um, this is purely front-end, so like we're not gonna be um, actually checking out and buying products in our store. It's purely just adding to cart and like um, saving and checking out your cart. It's, it's, it's a very simple React project, but it also teaches you a lot about React. So I'm not gonna integrate anything other than just purely front-end. So now that we installed both packages, we gotta start setting up the initial structure of our project. So we're gonna start out by actually um, writing out here our app.js um, and setting up our routes. So I'm gonna import over here at the top from uh, React Router DOM. And I'm gonna import, first of all, a browser router and let's call it router as always. Then we're gonna import the routes component and the route component. So the classic components that you always import whenever you are working with React Router DOM. Then I'm gonna come inside of our app uh, div over here and I'm just gonna set up our router. So all of our routes will exist inside of this router. But to define our routes, we're gonna have to put all of them inside of our routes component. And then um, over here at the top, we're gonna have a nav bar, just in between this router and this routes, we're gonna put a nav bar so we can navigate throughout our app. And inside of our routes, we're gonna put all the different routes we want. So initially, we only need two routes, right? Uh, we need uh, the route for the the, like the shop where you see all the products. And I'm gonna set it to be an, just a single slash because I want it to be the main page of our website. Then the second route is the cart, right? So I'm gonna put over here slash cart as a path because I feel like that makes sense. Then what we want is we want to create uh, the files that will contain the pages for each of our routes. And we wanna create the file that will contain the nav bar that we're gonna put over here. So the way I like to structure a beginner project is like this. I like to have a folder called pages and this folder will contain all the different pages. In this case, it will be two. It will be one for the shopping um, part of the website and the other one will be for the cart uh, part of our website. 
And then I also want to have a components folder. Now this components folder is for components that are not specific pages and that will be used in many different parts of our website, such as a navbar, the navbar will be accessible everywhere in the in the uh, project. So if I wanted to come over here and create a navbar dot JSX file, just like this, then I could. Um, also, you might notice that I called this JSX. This is because if I'm building a, a project, right, and I want to define files that are purely JavaScript and files that are actual React components, I like to call the JavaScript files JS and the uh, React components JSX. Um, so that's why I'm calling it this way. Then for our navbar, we're going to put a snippet and create our navbar component just like this. Now, with the navbar, we can actually import it over here by saying import from dot slash components slash navbar, and I import the navbar component. And I want to put it between the router and the routes. The reason for this is because um, what happens with React Router DOM is um, whatever you put inside of here will will change depending on what route you're in. But if you put this above the routes, then it will be present in every single um, route. So we always want the navbar to be available and, and being seen. So all that is changing when you change routes is whatever is below the navbar. So that's why we put it above. And you can see that right now, all we have is a simple n over here. Um, because that's what our navbar component is. But we can start out actually building our navbar, since um, I feel like it is important to start out with that since we can, we will then be able to navigate throughout the different pages. So for the navbar, all we have to do is we have to first of all, define a class name for this div, I'm just going to call it navbar. Um, again, this is for styling. Um, you don't have to do it this way if you don't want to use my styles. But uh, I will be adding so that when I add the CSS, um, all the styles will make sense. Then we're going to add another div inside of here. And this div will be where all the links will exist. So I'm going to call it links. And what are links? Well, they're just the the links that you click on to navigate throughout the pages. And in React Router DOM, there's a component called links. So I'm going to say React Router DOM, and I want to import the link component. And to create a link, all you do is you just say link, and you type here what the text for your link will be. For example, for the main page or sh the shopping page, we're going to write shop. And for the um, cart, we're not going to write anything yet. We're actually going to put an icon inside of here and you'll see in a second. But when you want to navigate throughout those um, pages, you actually have to put a to prop over here, which is a text uh, telling you where you want to go when you click on this link. If you want to go to the shopping page, you, you put the empty tag because it is uh, what we define it as its path. But if we want to go to the cart, we have to put the slash cart over here, and it will then work. Now, what we want to do is we want to add the icon for the cart link. And to do that, we're going to come over here at the top, we're going to import um, from the library that we installed the phosphor react, and we're going to import a component called shopping cart, just like this. Now to use this icon, all we have to do is we just have to display the component and set a size to it. Now the size I'm going to set is 32, because I feel like it's a good size and it matches how I want the styling. But you can see that now we have the shopping cart icon right over here. And if I click on the different um, links, it will change the URL at the top. Obviously, we haven't added any UI to be displayed when uh, you go to those specific routes. But we're going to do that right now that we have the actual set or the actual code for the navbar done. But before we get to that, I'm actually going to just quickly add the CSS for the navbar uh, by creating a navbar uh, .css file over here. And uh, again, I'm not going to show me writing the CSS, I'm just going to add it show to you guys the code that I added and come back in a second. Okay, as you can see, uh, with the CSS, now the navbar looks a lot better. Um, and the CSS is very simple. Uh, I just added some width, some height, some color, uh, also some CSS to make the links uh, be placed in the correct place. But uh, it's very simple stuff that I'm pretty sure you guys can figure out as well. So now that we finished up the navbar, let's start creating the structure for both pages that we're going to have in our application. So for the actually for each page, what I like to do is create a folder for them. The reason for that is because um, we're going to have other files that are um, 
part of this specific page and I want to organize all of them together. So for example, for our shopping page, I'll just create a folder called shop. And for our cart page, I'm going to create a folder called cart. Uh, I just realized that cart was put inside of the shop instead of inside of the pages. But now I fixed that and we have both of the folders over here. So for the shop page, I'm just going to come over here and create a file called shop.jsx. And I'm going to do the same for the cart, I'm going to create cart.jsx. Now again, I need to create both components. So I'm going to just type this over here, create the component. And I'll do the same over here. And uh, now that we have both components at least created, what we can do is we can import both of them over here at the top. So I'm going to say import from dot slash pages slash shop uh, slash shop again. And we're going to import the shop component, we're going to do the same thing with the cart by changing this to cart, this to cart and this to cart as well. And all we have to do now is in each of the routes, we're going to set an element. Now this element will be just the component being displayed, which in the first one, we're going to display the shop component. Uh, and then just close this like this. And on the second one will be the cart component just like this. And now you can see that um, in those components, we just display the name of them, right? So in the shop, we just display shop. But in the cart, we also just display cart, but you can see that navigating through the routes actually change what we're seeing in our screen, which means that our routes were successfully created. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to start writing the code for the shop, which is, um, we have to start with the shop to then go to the cart because we can't have a cart item without having the ability to add the shop items to cart. So with our shop, what we're going to do is we're going to start out just defining the uh, HTML um, structure of it, right? So we're going to start with a div with the class name shop, then another div, because we want to add a little title uh, text over here, uh, just the name of our store. Uh, and for this, I'm just going to add an h1 tag, I'm going to say something like uh, Pedro tech shop, but obviously, you can change this don't call it Pedro tech shop because it wouldn't make sense. Uh, but then we're going to add a class name to this, I'm going to call it a uh, shop title, something like this. Uh, then we want to add another div and this div will be for displaying the products. So I'm going to add a class name called products, just like this. Now, how are we going to display the products like I demoed in the beginning? Well, we do need to have a list of all the products that we're going to display in our store. Now, if you have a full stack application, maybe the product list will come from an API request that requests some data from a database. But this is all too complicated for the scope of this project. In this project, we're going to predefine what pro like what products we want to have in our store. So I want to create a file over here called uh, products.js. And you might see that I called it JS because it's not a component. All that this file would do is it will export uh, a list called products. And this list will contain the data for each product that we want to create, we're kind of like faking a JSON uh, data. Uh, and we're going to be using this as the data for our project. Now, how does this data look like? Well, it will be a list of objects because each object will represent a specific product. Now, each a product will probably want to have an ID right because you want to identify which like different products. So for the first one, we're going to give an ID of one, then we need a product name, uh, because each product will need to have a name, right. And the first one I remember having is an iPhone. So I'm just going to call it an iPhone. Then we need a price, which uh, I remember the iPhone was $99. So I'm going to put 99 999. And finally, we need a product image. Now, the product image is a little bit complicated. Uh, if you want to use the ones that I used, uh, all of that will be in the description, I already have all the images. So I'm actually just going to copy them and paste them into a folder, which I'm going to create over here called assets. And this folder will contain all the different images in our product in our project, right. So I'm just going to copy and paste the images that I already have saved in my computer over here, just to show you guys. Okay, as you can see, I just pasted all of the images for the products. Again, if you want to check them out, just click the link to the code in the description. But now that we have put all those images over here, if we want to set 
a specific image to a specific product, all I have to do is I have to come over here at the top, I have to import an image from uh, and then I give the path to that image. So in our case, we're going to say dot slash assets, slash, the name of the image, and I'm going to import the first one, which is called one dot PNG, and I need to give a name to that image. So I'm going to call it product one, then I can just put it right over here. And this is how we will define each of our products. Now, I'm going to do this for eight products. As you can see, we have eight images, and I already have the data for each of them. So I'm obviously not going to show me handwriting all of them. I'm going to cut right now to when all of them are done. But if you want to customize it, do it on your own, I would recommend doing that changing the names, changing the ID, changing the price, do whatever you want, even get different images. But for now, I'm just going to copy and paste what I've already done and paste it over here so that you guys don't have to see the tedious process of creating this data. Okay, as you can see, I just copy and pasted. Uh, this are the eight imports, always keep in mind that some images have different extensions. Um, so some of mine are PNG, some of some are WebP. Um, but as you can see, all the products were cor correctly created, um, I give a different price to all of them, a different ID to all of them. And this is extremely important. Um, but as you can see, it all works out perfectly. Okay, so now that we have our products done, what we have to do is come to our shop component over here. And we want to import um, from that file. So we need to go back twice. Uh, actually, one more time and then go to products, and we're going to import the products array. Now with this array, we're going to loop through every element, right? Because we want to display them in our screen, right? We want to render each of those um, products. So we're going to map through all of them, and grab the data that comes with each of them, right? So the data would include um, like the ID, the product name, the price, the product image, all of that. So um, to do that, we're just going to return um, for each of those products, another component, right? Actually, I don't have to return it like this, I can just return it by just rendering that component. I'm going to create another component called product, it hasn't been created yet, but this is how it's going to look. Um, and we're going to create it inside of this uh, folder over here, we're gonna call it product.jsx. Now to create it, I'm just going to put RAFC, create the component, then just come over here and import the component correctly. Um, I'm just going to import it directly from here, I'm going to say import from dot slash product, and I'm going to import the component. Now, um, I want to pass in the data for each specific product into this component, because I want to basically just it, it, what will exist inside of this component is the little card or the little because um, what will exist inside of this component is the UI for each specific product being displayed in the shop. So what I want to do is I'm going to actually create a prop called data. And this will basically just be all of the data for the specific product um, being passed up. And then on our product component, we're going to grab the props. And from here, we're going to get from props .data, all of the data uh, that each product has. So that would include the ID, the product name, the price, and the product image, just like this, then um, it's given us a bunch of errors. And I guess it's because um, Oh, I just realized uh, I have to fix the import of this, I just fixed it. So I think it's fine. But uh, okay, let's go back over here to our product page, we have each of our products um, being displayed. Actually, since there's eight products, and right now we're all we're doing is for each product, we're uh, just sending back the word product, you can see it is actually mapping through the array because there's eight products being displayed here. But we're not actually displaying the correct information. If I wanted to test to see if I'm displaying the correct information for each product, I could, for example, just try to display the product name, and you'll see that it actually does that, which is amazing. But uh, we want to do much more than that, we want to display the image, the price, all of that stuff. So let's start defining the structure for how this component will look like. So the first thing is a class name. Now I'm going to call this a product, then I want to add an image, right the image of the product. Now the image, it's pretty simple. Um, all I, I want to do with it is I'm going to set a source. And the source for this image will be the product image that we define for each product. Then 
I want to have a div over here. And this div will include the product name and the price. So I'm gonna give a class name uh, and call it description. So it's kind of like the product description. And inside of here, I want to define a p tag to uh, display the product name, just like this product name. And also I want to make it bold. So I'm going to surround this with uh, like a B tag, just to make it bold. And then I also want to add another P tag, another paragraph tag, uh, and just display the price. And I also want to add a money sign over here, just to specify that it's money. You can see that right now it is working. It is displaying this for each image uh, for each product. But obviously, <laughs> the UI looks horrible. Uh, I would never want to buy a product from a store that looks like this. So we're going to fix that in a second. Um, to fix that, I actually just have to so to get it started to look like what we wanted, I'm just going to add the CSS by adding a file over here called shop.css. And I'm just gonna also import it um, on our shop. When I import the CSS file on the shop, it will also import um, on the components inside of it. So all the styles we put on this one will also be applicable because this component is inside of the shop component. So I'm going to put the CSS and be back in a second. Okay, um, as you can see, I added all of the CSS. Um, if you want to take a look, I just made it so that now it will look perfectly fine, just like uh, in the demo, it has a three column layout. Um, and we see the price and the product name just like this. Now, this looks great, right? But there's a very important feature that is missing here, the button to actually click on um, and add the, the product to cart. So I'm going to add that um, just as a, a initial measure because we have a lot of stuff to do um, in order to make the adding to cart functionality work. But for now, let's just add the button and it won't have any functionality other than saying that it is an add to cart button. I'm also going to add a class name to it because I know I added some styling to it. And I'm going to call it add to cart button. And you'll see that now it's being displayed over here. But when I click on it, nothing happens because we haven't made it so that something will happen. Now, this is where this starts to get a little bit complicated, but also really interesting. How are we going to set up a, a system where if I add to cart an item over here, it's going to keep track of the items that I add to cart, so that when I go to another route, or another completely different component, I'm going to see that information being uh, displayed over here, because it keeps track of everything. Well, we need to manage a state that uh, will represent all of that. Now to manage a state, we can use a lot of different tools, um, state management tools that are available in react, um, I'm going to use the context API, because it is a simple product project and the context API comes with react. And in the sense that you can easily you don't have to install anything other than uh, just running your create react app command. So that's what I'm going to be doing. And I think it's a good introduction to state management, I feel like the context API is a really nice tool that a lot of people uh, don't know a lot about. So that's why I wanted to introduce this as well. So in order to start using the context API in our project, I'm actually going to create a folder called context. And inside of here, I'm going to create a file called shop context.jsx. Now, if you're not familiar with the context API, I would recommend watching a, a video uh, before this about it if you want to go get more in depth. Um, I do have a whole course on just this topic if you're interested in it. Um, but um, I think what we're going to do in here is gonna also be able if you've never done it before, you'll probably understand it as well. So what we've done here is we just created this component called shop context, I'm actually going to call it the shop context provider. And inside of here, it's where we're actually going to define our states, and everything that is related to logic in our project. Now, to do that, we need to create what is known as a context. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to export the const and call it shop context. Now, what what does this context mean? Well, it means that uh, we're going to create this kind of like store in our in our application, where it's going to keep track of states and functions that um, needs to be accessed everywhere in our project, right? So I want to have a state where I can access and change that state in the shop, but also in the cart. 
So that's why creating a context can be really useful because then I can use this to access and modify the state on both of those components. So when I create this shop context, all I have to do is I actually have to um, wrap this around with the shop context, and then say dot provider. Now, why am I creating a whole component for this? Well, because I want to keep track of all of the data and organize my my logic inside of this single component. So all this component does is it will define all the states for our application inside of here, um, define all the functions that will be used, and then just pass it to the provider. Now, how are we going to render this? Well, I'm going to grab the props and actually just display whatever we wrap this around by saying props.children. Now, if this is the first time you're seeing something like this, I would recommend taking a look um, at what props.children does. We're just wrapping this around and creating a component that is not self enclosed, but rather, um, it will wrap around other um, components in our application. Then over here, we can actually start creating um, the states that we're going to have in our application. So we're actually only going to have one state, which is going to be called, um, let's call it cart items, right? Um, I'm going to call it cart items. And then the function will be set cart items just like this. Now, um, this state will actually be an object, right? It will be an object with um, eight properties. This is how I want to structure this. And I'll just start writing it over here just to explain to you guys, but it will be an object, it will have um, a key of the ID of each product. So like we have the product uh, array over here, right? And each product has an ID. So what I want to do is I want to have an object that for each product ID, which is the key, we're going to put over here how many items currently are in the cart with this specific ID. So initially, all of them will be zero, right? The second product or the ID with the product with or the product with the ID two, we have zero, um, then three with zero and so on. But if I wanted to add the product with the ID two to cart, then this would change to one. If I wanted to add five of them, this would change to five, right? So this is the idea of how this state will, will look like. Now, I can easily set a default value of this to be what I was going to do, right? So we have eight products, and I just set one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then just put it right over here, right? But if I wanted to add a new product, then I would have to add a new element like this. So what I want to do is I actually want to create a function that will um, get the array and create an empty object um, to represent our initial state of our cart items. So I'm just going to call it get default cart. This is not necessary, but I feel like it will help a lot. So if I want to add more products, then this function will automatically handle that. So what this is going to do is we're going to create a cart object like this, then we're going to loop through all of the items in a cart. So I'm going to say products and import the products array that length, then I'm going to increase by one. And then for each item, I'm going to store it out defining the cart item to have a key equal to the I value over here, and set it equal to zero. And at the end, I'm just returning this cart. Now, why am I doing this? Well, because, um, again, uh, we want to create an object with the IDs equal to the IDs of the products. But if we want to add more more products, we just have to add them to this array. And not and this will handle um, the changes automatically. And now you might ask yourself as well, why did we start with with one instead of zero? Um, basically, we started because oh, and also I have to say plus one, basically, we started because the IDs don't start with zero, they start with one. So we just made that minor adjustment, right? So, okay, if you're confused by this, don't worry, leave a comment in the, in the comment section, I can answer to explain it better. But basically, this will allow us to just get a simple object that will be the default um, state of our cart without adding anything to the cart. Now um, that we have our state, we need to think about this. Um, what are some stuff that we might want to do with this state? Well, first of all, we might want to be able to add an item to cart, right? So we're going to create this function inside of here called add to cart. Now this function will take in the ID of an item we want to add to cart. And all it's going to do is it's going to set the cart items array or object to be equal to um, the same object as it was before. So I'm going to actually grab the previous value of the state and set it to be equal to the same as before. And since I'm returning an object, I also have to wrap this with 
some parentheses. But I also want to make one change. I want to grab the specific item with this item ID and change it to be whatever it was before plus one because we're adding one we're changing the object that for example, if I wanted to add, change the item with ID one, right, I would probably go from one zero to one one. And then if I would did again, it would go to one two. So this is the item ID, which we're defining over here. And we're setting it equal to whatever it was before plus one. So how do we get what used to be the item ID? Well, we just say prev item ID. So we're grabbing the previous one and adding one, right? So this logic, it looks a little bit complicated, but um, it makes sense, right? We're just setting to change an, an item, we're just altering that specific items ID, um, its value and adding plus one. Now this is all the functionality for adding to cart. Now how do we remove from cart? Well, we can do it similar to what we did before. I'm gonna say remove um, from cart. But the difference is obvious, we're just subtracting one like this. Now that we have both of them kind of done, um, we're going to add more functionality later on. But for now, um, let's just keep those and um, we want to start the process of passing this um, into our provider so that we have access to it outside of this component. So how exactly are we going to do that? Well, um, if you want to pass in, you can just come over here and pass a value, which will require an object containing all the different um, states and functions you want to to pass into your provider. Now we're going to create this um, context value over here. And like I said, it will just be a normal object. And I'm going to pass in everything that I might want to access, right? So first of all, I want to have the cart items over here, then I also want to have the add to cart function. And finally, the remove from cart function, just like this, then I'm going to pass the context value directly over here. And now if I want to access the cart items or any one of these th things over here, all I have to do is I have to go to where I want to access it, which in our case, it will be in the products component. Uh, because here's where we have the add to cart button, and we need to access the add to cart function. Then what we want to do is we want to come over here at the top and import um, from the actual uh, context folder, and shop context, we want to import the shop context just like this, right? Oh, one thing I forgot, um, we created this shop context provider, but we never actually applied it to our app. So we have to come to our app.js right over here, and wrap everything we have over here around with the shop context provider. <coughs> shop context provider, just like this. Um, and now all all of this components will have access to whatever we put in the value of the provider. So let's continue. So we're here in the, the product.jsx, right, we import the shop context, then we just say const, we set it equal to use context, which is a hook that comes with react, it will automatically import, and we just pass in the context which we want to grab the values. So now if I want to have access to, for example, the add to cart function, all I have to do is just grab the add to cart function right over here and now we have access to it. So I'm just going to pass in as the on click of this function, just like this. Uh, I'm going to say that when you click on the button, I want to call the add to cart function. Now, it actually requires as you remember, it requires an ID, right, the ID to the item you want to add. And since this button will exist inside of each product, right, because we're mapping through the array. Uh, let me just open up the shop again we're mapping through the array. And for each of the array elements, we have we rendered this product component. So the ID for the item we want to add to cart exists as we passed it through props. So all I have to do is just pass this ID over here. And I'm actually just going to keep console logging over here the the value of cart items. So you guys can see that um, it is actually changing. So I'm going to inspect element over here. Let's go to our console. And you'll see there's uh, it console logged immediately from the start. This is our cart items, right? It has our eight items over here, but it has zero for each of them. Now, if I click on add to cart for the first one, you'll see it will console log again. But now we have one for the first one because we called the add to cart function. If I click again, it will console log again. But now it will be two. If I click on the I don't know this one, 
you'll see that now the item number five also increased by one. So it means that our add to cart function is working perfectly, which is amazing. But we're not seeing that uh, the number over here, right? We're not seeing the number uh, of this specific cart item. Because uh, if you recall in the demo, when you added when you added something to cart, it kind of showed how many items of that specific item was in your cart. So what I want to do to fix that is I'm actually going to delete this over here, come to our product. And in our add to cart button, we're going to add some logic related to that. So we need the cart items uh, uh, state, right? Because we need to have access to that state in order to see how many, I how many items uh, are in our cart. And over here, we're just going to add some logic by saying that, um, well, if the amount uh, for the item with this specific ID is um, greater than zero, then we want to display the amount. But how do we know what is the amount? Well, we can just create a variable over here called cart item amount. And the amount will literally just be the cart items. And we grab the value with the ID of this specific product, because that will be the amount of this specific product in our cart. So then we just say, okay, if cart item amount is greater than zero, then I want to display this uh, simple uh, UI over here, which is just going to be a parentheses uh, with the actual uh, cart item amount. So we'll see that now it shows like it's two, if I keep clicking, it will increase. And I can do the same for the other ones as well, right? It only displays if the cart item amount for that specific product is greater than zero. Um, and then it displays the correct amount just like it should. Now, let's go back over here, we have all of this logic done. But what is left now is adding the logic and everything related to our actual cart because we, we are able to add stuff to cart, but our cart isn't being displayed over here. So to do that, we're going to come over here. And we're going to take a look at our um, cart component, which we haven't actually created yet, we just have this, which is fine, but we want to create the structure for it. So the structure is pretty simple. First of all, it will have a class name of cart, right? Because this is how we always start. Then uh, I want to add a div with a little title just like we did with the shop. Um, I'll put an h1 tag over here. And I'll say your cart items just like this. Then I want to uh, create another div called uh, probably cart items. Uh, let's give a class name of cart items cart items. By the way, I don't know if you guys noticed, but my voice is kind of screwed in this video. It's just because I'm pretty sick. And that's why sometimes it may fail. But continuing um, over here, we have this is the list of all of our items. And it's going to be very similar to what we did in our shop, where we, we have this list of items, and we want to map through all of them, right? So we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to grab our products list, just like this products, and we're going to say products dot map, and we're going to grab each product. But the difference is, we don't want to display all the products here like we did on our shop, right? The shop, all we did was, no matter what product, we just display it by rendering this product component over here. In our case, we actually want to only display the items that are from the products array that are also pre uh, in our cart, right? So how do we know if a product from the product array is in our cart? Well, if the actual, um, let me go to the context, if the cart items um, object with the key equal to the products ID has a value greater than zero, right? Because then it means that we there's more than zero items in the cart for that specific product. So what we have to do is we just have to uh, actually, I just realized this became product with capital P. Um, all we have to do is we have to say if the cart items and for that, we actually have to do that whole thing we just did with the, the shop, not with shop with the actual product um, thing over here, where we import the shop context, we have to do the exact same thing. And we grab the stuff from the context. So we have to do this and grab the cart items. So what we're going to say is, okay, if the cart items object, and the element with the product dot ID has is not equal to zero, then it means that um, there this product is in the cart, right? Because we're checking, okay, for each specific product, if the product.id, uh, 
as the key of the car items object is not has a value that is not equal to zero, that means that it is greater than zero, meaning that um, it is probably um, it is an, an, a, 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 th a product that is in your cart. So if that's the case, we want to return uh, a new component we're going to create called card item, cart item, just like this. And it's going to be very similar. We haven't created it yet, but it's going to be very similar to the product component that we created, where we're going to pass in the product as a, a prop to a prop called data. So what we have to do is we just have to create this component. I'm going to create it right over here, cart item.jsx. And this component will be very simple. All we have to do here is um, first change the title. Then we're going to create a div with a class name of court item, just like this. Then uh, we want to define how we want each item in our cart to look like. If you recall in the demo, what it looked like was basically very similar to the product. It had an image right over here where um, we have the source and the source will be equal to the product image. Now we get the product image and all of the product information by grabbing the props and doing the whole thing where we did with, uh, with the product before, which is we just grab everything from the props.data, just like this, and we just pass the product image as the source. Then what we want to do is we want to have a little description just like before, right? We're going to have a div, give it a class name of description. And over here, we want to put a p tag to represent the product name. So I'm going to put p and we're going to make it bold as well, just like we did before, and just pass in the product name. Just like this. Then we also want to have the price. So I'm also going to put a p tag for the price. And if you recall, we put a money sign, and then the price of the product. Okay, this is all good. But we want to, I'm just going to add the, the styling so that it, it kind of you guys can have an idea because right now, First of all, it's given us an error. And I feel like it's given us an error because in our cart over here, we never imported use context. So we have to import use context. And also we never imported the cart item component. So we're going to do that right now. I'm going to say import from dot slash cart item, and we're going to import the cart item component. So you can see it is working, but we have nothing in our cart. So if I try to add one thing in our cart, you'll see that now it appears over here because it is looping through every cart item that we have. Now, if I add it, uh, if I want to add more stuff, you'll see that it's not like properly aligned. There's no styling. So again, I'm going to add all of the styling for this specific area of our project. I'm going to create a cart dot CSS over here, and I'm going to add the CSS and be back in a second. Okay, so I just pasted all of the CSS. Um, this is how it looks. Um, it doesn't do much. All it does is basically, you can see all of our cart items are now being displayed in a way that actually makes sense, right. And um, I also imported the CSS file inside of our cart.jsx. So don't forget to do that as well if you're adding CSS. So now what I want to do is I want to add the ability to have like a plus and minus a button over here with a little text input, where when I click on it, I can alter the amount in our cart for that specific product. So to do that, I'm going to come over here to our cart item, um, like component, and below the price, just right over here, actually below the description, maybe no, it's still in the description. Yeah, I'm going to just add a div. And let's call it a uh, count handler. Now this is where we're going to be changing the amount of each products uh, in, in the cart. So first, we want to have a button, which is going to be a minus because you're going to be using it to decrease the count, then you want to have a button for the plus, right to increase the amount. And then in the middle, you have to have you want to have an input, which we can manually change the the value, right. So this is how it's going to look just like this. Now, I want to set an initial value for the input, because this value will be I want to already display over here the amount that is already in the cart. So for example, if if we look over here, uh, we have one, but we have two of this one and one of this one. So it should show over here one, two, and one by default, right? So to do that, I'll just add the value and to get the value, I need the actual cart item. So again, I'm going to do all the stuff that we did with uh, the 
the both components where we grab everything from the context. Um, and to do that, I need to import the use context hook and also import the shop context from um, the context file that we created, right? And then why do we have an error? Oh, because we, we need to pass the value. What we have to do now is we just say cart items over here and then pass in the actual ID of this current item, right? The one that we grabbed from our props. And then it will actually display the correct value for, uh, for th this specific product. Then what we want to do is we want to start handling the adding and removing, right? So that's going to be simple because we already have those two functions in our shop context uh, file, right? We have the add to cart and remove to cart, but we haven't used the remove to cart yet. So to use it, all we want to do is we want to import the add to cart and the remove from cart. Then over here, I want to add an on click for this one and just say remove from cart. And remember, it requires us to pass the ID over here. Then I'm going to do the same thing with the plus, but add to cart just like this. Now let's see if it's working. Uh, I'm going to try to add more stuff to this one. It seems to be working. If I come back, it should be updated and show that there's five instead of one. Uh, if I want to remove, I can remove, right? I can remove easily and I can do this with all of them. Uh, if I if one of them is at one, I can also remove to zero and it will disappear, right? I can basically clear up my cart. So everything seems to be working. But we still have to finish the less the, the less functionality, uh, I believe, which is to be able to alter this text input over here. So to do that, all we have to do really is we need to actually create uh, a new function because over here, inside of our inputs, we're going to have an on change, which we can grab the event, right? So we can use the target of value to grab the actual value that is on the input. But we don't have any functions. Uh, in our shop context that allows us to manually change the actual value of a specific product count in the cart items. So what I want to do is I want to come over here and I want to say const and we're going to create this function called update cart item count. And it will require two things. It will require first the new amount we want to update this to. So if the cart items for a specific product was one, uh, we want to we write on the input five, it, the new amount should be five. Then we also need the item ID to know which item we're changing, right? Then over here, all we're going to do is we're going to set the cart items to be equal to what it was before, just like we've been doing so far. So three dots prev, but then the item ID. Now, instead of increasing or decreasing by one, it will be equal to the new amount, just like this. Now, since we want to access this on other components, we need to put it inside of our context value. So I'm going to come over here and put it. So then now I can just import this from our use context just like this and pass it in over here. Now, what are the arguments we pass? Well, the first one is a new amount and that will be equal to event.target.value. Also recall that since this is an input um, and it's not a number input, it's a text input. This over here, the event or target of value will be a text, will be a string and not a number. So we need to convert it into a number just like this. Then we want to pass in the ID and that will be simple. I just pass in the ID that we grabbed from the props and it should be working. That means that now if I come over here and I want to change this, the camera to be 99 items, I can just do this and you'll see that it does change in our actual thing, right? It changes the value from our state, which is amazing. So this is basically it for all of the uh, in like major features. The last thing we want to do is just have those two buttons over here at the bottom to continue shopping or checkout and also display the total amount of our whole cart. So to do that, all we have to do is we come over here to our, I think our cart, we want to add this div called um, maybe like footer or actually I'm going to call it checkout. Uh, it's just like the last part of our cart. Then over here, I'm going to add a P tag for the subtotal of our cart. And right now we don't have that actual amount, but we're going to write the logic to get that amount in a second. Then I want to have a button for continuing shopping and a button for checking out. 
Now the checkout button won't do anything because this wasn't the purpose of um, this tutorial. Um, obviously, I'm not going to show you guys how to go through like paying for stuff in a e real e-commerce website. This is more of a beginner React project. It is purely fronted. If you guys want to see me actually build a full stack version of this, where you can actually do all of that, I can for sure do it. But um, we're not going to add that functionality. Now you can see that if I save this, um, it appears over here at the bottom, but um, the amount is not being displayed. So to get the amount, I actually have to um, go to our shop context over here. And I'm going to create a function called um, get total cart amount. So this function, all it does is it just generates the total cart amount, right? So to do that, we have to first create a variable called total amount and set it equal to zero. And what we're going to do is we're going to loop through every item in the cart items um, object, see if their values are greater than zero, meaning that there is one, like one of them in the cart. And when they're, they are in the cart, we grab that value, which is the amount of them in the cart, and multiply times the price of that specific product, and add that to the total amount. So let's do that right now, we're going to say for const item in cart items, this is how you loop through an object, then I'm going to ask if the cart items, and then item is greater than zero. So if the value is greater than zero, then we know that we want to add it is in the cart. So I'm going to get the item information. Why do I need to get the item information? Because I don't know the price, right, of this specific item. To know the price, I need to go into our products array. Uh, so I'm just going to say products like this. We need to go to this array and try to find the specific product in this array with the ID where the product.id is equal to the item. And I have to convert it into a number as well. Now, what exactly is this logic doing? Well, find is a function in JavaScript where you find a specific element in an array where um, some part of it satisfy a condition. In this case, we're just asking, okay, we know that the item over here or is the ID representing the product which is in the cart. So we're just trying to find that product so that we can have access to its price. Because now all I have to do is I just have to say the total amount is equal to the total amount. So it's, we're just adding to the total amount, uh, the cart items item times the item info dot price. Now, what is this? Well, this is the amount of that specific product in the cart. So we have two of them then we want to add, multiply that the price times two, right? We just don't we don't want to have you pay only one for three or more products, right? So we're doing this and at the end of this loop, it should have the correct total amount. So I'm just going to say return total amount. Now we want to have access to this somewhere else. So we're also going to put it in the context value in our cart over here. I'm just going to um, grab this directly over here and just grab that amount. So total amount is equal to this function. And now we can use this over here. And you'll see that it correctly um, calculates the subtotal, right? Uh, it's a very big amount because we have 103 of this thing. But if I set this to zero, um, it decreases by a lot. And it changes depending on how many items we add, right? So this is pretty cool. Um, the last thing I want to do is just whenever you click on continue shopping, just go back to the shopping page, right? So to do that, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, all we do is we actually have to do some stuff related to react router Dom, we just come over here at the top, we import um, from react router Dom, and we want to import something called the use navigate hook. Now, why do we need to import this? Well, because I want to be able to click on this button and navigate to another um, route in our React router um, route definition, right? So to do that, we have to grab this function called navigate, set it equal to use navigate, and just use this function um, as the method of navigation, all we say is navigate, 
and we put the route to where we want to go. In our case, it's the empty slash because we want to go back to the main page. You see now, if I click on continue shopping, it will bring us to the main page, which is exactly what we needed. I also realized that um, when we go to zero, right, the subtotal to subtotal is zero. Uh, as of right now, it's still showing this. And in the demo, uh, I actually didn't show this. This is because I have to add this final piece of logic over here, where I ask, okay, if the the total amount, right, is greater than zero, then I want to display all of this stuff over here. But if it's not, and actually, I'm going to put this outside of this div, just over here. Um, but if this is not greater than zero, then I want to display an h1 tag saying your cart is empty. Just like this. So what this does is now it says your cart is empty. But if I add more stuff, then it will display uh, the cart and the subtotal and the buttons just like this. So this is basically it for the code of this video. Now I'm going to show you guys how to actually deploy this whole application so that anyone can access it uh, by using a really good service, which is sponsoring this video called Hostinger. Okay, everyone. So now that we finished the code for the project, let's start the deployment process. So first of all, let's claim a domain. Now claiming a domain is really simple with Hostinger. All you do is click the claim domain button, assuming you actually um, got the free domain with Hostinger, and you choose the extension over here. There's a bunch of options you can choose. I'm going to choose a dot com because I, I think it's <laughs> the best option out of all of this over here. Um, just because you know, like dot com usually uh, implies, uh, in my opinion, a more secure website, I just think of it that way. It's my opinion, but um, you can choose all the other options as well. And I think it should be fine. I do have domains with dot net, such as pedro technology dot net. Um, and everything like it's fine, you just choose whatever you prefer. So I'm choosing com. And then what you put over here is the name of your domain. So in my case, we, we created a shop, right a, a, a store uh, as our project. So I'm just going to give it a cool name such as Pedro tech um, store or Pedro tech shop. Yeah, probably like this Pedro tech shop. So I'm going to click on check availability because maybe someone already has this domain. But you guys can see no one has it. So I can claim the domain really simply. I just have ownership over this domain and no one else has it. So I can use this domain to host our project. We can actually choose now um, the information about us because it is important that you put a contact information when you have domain in case someone, for example, wants to buy the domain from you. So you always have to do this. So I'm going to put over here. Um, this is just uh, your country, I think is a country of residence, or no, the country of citizenship. So I'm going to choose Brazil, which is where I was born in, and I'm going to click on next step. And it's going to ask for your um, contact details. I'm not going to show me doing this, I'm just going to fill it out myself. But um, you should um, fill it out yourself and come back when you're done with it. Okay, as you can see, uh, I finished filling it up. And it says that um, I'm almost there because they're reviewing the information that I put for my domain. So um, they're verifying everything as you can see, but we now have ownership over this domain. So what we want to do is we're going to come to home over here. And we're going to start setting up our premium web hosting um, that we have over here that we got from our purchase of the plan. So I'm gonna click on setup, and it will bring us here, then we're gonna click on start now. Now it asks us for an option between creating a new website or migrating my website. Now, this is actually important to understand because migrating a website is just in case you already have a website being hosted somewhere else, and you want to migrate it to Hostinger. And creating a new website is not what we want as well. Because this is actually when you want to use something like WordPress, which Hostinger has support for um, to create your website, we actually want to click on skip and create an MC website, then you got to choose a domain. So if you don't have a domain, or if you want to buy a domain, um, you can just click on buy new domain or select the domain you already have. In our case, since we bought we got it with the plan on Hostinger, it's already over here. So we can just select it. Now it also asks us for our server location. And the good thing about Hostinger as well is that it has 10 data center locations around the world. So uh, that means that you will constantly have a high speed connection um, to any of them. Uh, if you are around those areas, and they have it in a lot of different um, areas of the world. So you can just choose whichever one makes more sense to you. Um, I'm obviously right over here, uh, actually right over here. So I'm going to choose the North America USA AZ one, 
and um, it should be fine. So I'm just gonna click on finish setting up. Now, as you can see, it is um, initializing like everything it is creating. So when this loading bar over here is done, I'll be back in a second. Now that it's done, it's gonna say um, either to view our website or go to the control panel. Obviously, um, I wanna go to the control panel because I wanna make some changes and start setting up and actually deploying the website um, through the H panel, which I mentioned previously. So this is the actual panel and it has a bunch of stuff related to our um, project being hosted. Right now, there's obviously nothing. If we go to pagetechshop.com, it's actually being, uh, it's, it's just a preview window because um, um, it has to finish being set up, but, um, we can start actually putting the files inside of our system. Now, how do we do that? Well, straight up, there's an option over here called File Manager, and that's the thing we're gonna click. Now, on File Manager, it's going to open this up, and it's basically gonna ask for a build version of your project. We haven't generated that yet, but we can easily generate it right here if we go to our code and we run um, yarn build. Now, if you're running, if you're using NPM, you have to actually run NPM run build but I'm using yarn, so I'm gonna run um, yarn build. And what this will do is it will create an optimized production build, which will basically be what we're going to be putting inside of our H panel, it's this folder over here. Now, when this is done, which <laughs> it just got done, uh, I'm gonna open this up on or review all of this on, on, on Finder, just so I can ha see the file over here, or the folder over here. And I'm gonna open up the public underlying HTML folder on the file manager. When I open this up, there's gonna be this thing called default.php. I want you guys to actually delete this because it won't, uh, you need to delete this for this to work. Then you're gonna open up your build folder over here, and then just copy and paste everything that is inside of here inside of um, this folder. It's gonna install or upload everything, as you can see, really quickly. And now, just like that, if I actually go to our website, you'll see that it's been deployed, which is really cool, right? Um, this is a preview of the website. As you can see, it even sa says to us that it is a preview, but it is the website that we deployed and it's been created just like we wanted to. Now, you can see that um, this is actually just a preview, right? Um, and it is um, it has a secure connection, but this is just a preview. Uh, if we actually wanna try going to pedrotechshop.com, um, it will work. As you can see, we are in the actual domain of the website and it is the same website, but it is not secure. Now, what does it mean to be not secure? It means that there's no SSL certificate installed in this website. Now, it, I would recommend every time you have a public website to install a certificate because it means that it is more secure. So um, in order to get that going, we already have um, a free SSL certificate that comes with the, the hosting plan. Well, to set that up, what you have to do is you go to SSL over here and you see um, it actually is supposed to automatically install for you, but sometimes it might fail, so it will retry to install it. And on my second try, you see it actually actively installed the SSL certificate. So now if I go to my thing and I refresh, it should actually be secure just like it is. So I wanted to show this because sometimes it might fail um, on the first try, but it tries, uh, I think, 26 times, and um, you don't have to do anything to actually um, retry it. So if that happens to you, uh, just wait a little bit and it will um, install for you as well. So this is basically it for this video. Um, I wanted to thank Hostinger for sponsoring this video. I really, really like the platform. If I didn't, I wouldn't have um, made two videos with them already. Um, and I think like to this day, my other projects are also um, live and working. So I never had any issues with them and they are really good with what they do. Um, also, if you wanna help support the channel and you wanna set up your account with Hostinger, um, please go in the description. I'm gonna have a link over there and you use my discount code as well. You will get like some benefit from it by getting the discount. Um, and you also help support the channel if you ever need, uh, if you ever want to support the channel in some sort of way, um, just do that. And yeah, that's basically it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like down below and comment what you wanna see next. Subscribe, cause I'm posting. Um, twice a week, it depends. I've been sick for like a month and basically it's been really hard uh, to record my videos. Um, I also had to deal with some stuff the month before that um, and it decreased the amount of I, I, I up uploaded. But um, hopefully January 2023, it's gonna be the year where I'm gonna be as consistent as I was before that. And I, I really appreciate all the support that I got from you guys. Like this year has been insane. 
I hit 100,000 subscribers. That's, I don't, I, I haven't even processed that yet. And it was all because of you guys. So that's why I wanted to thank all of you guys again. So yeah, that's basically it. Really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I see you guys next time.